Seasonal allergies can really be annoying to deal with and I am one of them. So I feel for you if you have or if you are dealing with them now currently. So in fact, I have been a little bit and I wanted to just share three herbs that I've been using and how specifically I'm using each one of them and in hopes that maybe it will help some of you today. So let's get right into it. In today's video, let's talk about three herbs for seasonal allergies. Welcome to True Freedom Permaculture where we discuss natural living and how to have a green thumb even if you weren't born. The first herb is one most people have heard of, sage. And most of you have this either in your kitchen spice rack or growing out in your garden, which is really wonderful. It's very accessible. And there is an old English saying, and I might butcher this because I meant to brush up on my old English, but I just ran out of time. And it goes something like, he that would live for A must eat sage in May. So A just means longevity or forever, so it means that they were onto the fact that sage had some really great health benefits, and if you wanted to live a long life, then you should eat sage in May, so the saying goes. Now, it wasn't just the English who were onto this. Sage tea has been revered and taken for many years as far as medicinal, for medicinal purposes in places like China and in Jamaica and Italy too. So that's not the only country that practices this. It has many properties that are great for health, but the ones we're going to focus on today in relation to allergies are like a lot of times sore throat is a symptom of allergies because you're getting like a lot of mucus and nasty things just kind of going down your throat and so it irritates the lining of your throat. Well, if you gargle with sage tea or an infusion of sage, it is said to really help that. So some of you, you know, something that I've had some luck with too is if you're getting like a lot of drainage on your throat, you can gargle with like warm salt water. Well, you could take some of the leaves and you could rub it into the sea salt because it's coarse and it'll sort of help release the oils and the leaves of the sage. And then you can mix that with the water. Um, and you probably want to give that a strain so you don't choke on the leaves, but then you can gargle with that too. But one word of caution, and this brings up a good point, which is as always when I'm doing these videos for you on herbs, this is not like a recommendation for everyone. So please go to your trusted healthcare provider first. Make sure that there are no contraindications for you if you're taking medications or you might have specific circumstances for which these herbs may not be good for you. So please double check that. Um, but sage in particular, if you're pregnant or breastfeeding, really be careful uh, because they actually help to reduce your milk supply. So for example, if you're weaning, then this could be a benefit to you. But just something that I wanted to point out, a contra contraindication that I think is important. Another symptom of seasonal allergies is a really stuffy nose. And something that's good for clearing that up, if you look at like, for example, cough drops a lot of times or rubs for the chest, a lot of times an ingredient that's included is menthol. And something that has a similar sort of cooling opening effect is eucalyptus. And eucalyptus can come in many forms. Obviously this is not the plant, this is the essential oil from Mountain Rose Herbs, who I really like. Eucalyptus itself, the leaves are great. You can pull some of them off if you don't want to use the oil, and you can use them to create steams. So you just have like a, a pot of hot water, and you add some eucalyptus leaves, and then, you know, be careful, don't burn yourself, but put a towel over your head and put your whole head over the bowl and then you can just like gently let it open up your airways. What I did the other day which really helped me was I drew a hot bath and this is well known too so um, if you have the time draw a hot bath add some eucalyptus leaves or eucalyptus essential oil if you do use the essential oil, it's really strong. If for any of you that have ever had like mint essential oil touch your skin, it gives it off a burn. So you know, for me, I can, I know myself and I just put in a couple drops and that's it into the bath water, but the oil does separate from the water if you think about it. So it's not just going to like blend in if you swish it around. So really the best way to do this is to use a carrier oil with it first. So something like jojoba oil and then mix that with a few drops of eucalyptus first and then add it to the bath water along with some Epsom salt. And it makes a really nice antiseptic, um, opening bath and it was nice just to soak in it, breathe in that steam. I made sure all the windows were closed so that way I could just breathe everything in and I just felt so much better. It felt so healing for me. So like I said, either a bath 
or a steam made with eucalyptus can be wonderful. The other thing you can do if you have the essential oil is you can put a few drops into a diffuser. And you can just have that running in the background and that will help you as well. The third herb for seasonal allergies is mullein. For those of you who are not familiar with mullein, mullein is a spectacular plant that gets really, really tall. And in the summer, it has these yellow flowers and it's kind of cone shaped and it's has amazing qualities to it, but today we're going to talk about its benefits for the respiratory system. It's well known for that, and in fact, um, indigenous tribes used to use it as blends and pipes. Sometimes you might see it in like herbal cigarettes as an ingredient because of its known effects for the respiratory system. And I'm not advocating that you smoke it. Smoke is still an irritant to the lungs but they used to include it to kind of counteract some of the harmful effects of tobacco. So that's just my point there. But as far as mullein, I take mine as a tea. So this is mine. And I just make it in the beginning of the day. I make a big pot of it in a French press. And then I just slowly sip it in small amounts throughout the day. And I have noticed a marked difference in between when I'm not drinking it and when I am as far as suppressing my coughs and then getting rid of that like scratchy throat that can happen when you have allergies. It really, really helps with that. And also for those of you that have maybe suffered from colds or allergies, you might have noticed that sometimes you have this like trailing cough that lasts for weeks. Well, in my experience, it has shortened the duration of that. So I don't know if that's happened for some of you as well, but this is a wonderful, wonderful herb for seasonal allergies. Let's take a close-up view of some mullein together, shall we? So here you're going to see you've got mostly the leaves here, maybe a few pieces of stem. But once it's crushed up and dried, it really doesn't look that much different from something you'd have in your spice cabinet. Maybe it looks a little similar to oregano or something like that. The smell is very subtle, uh, just slightly herby and green, but this is what it looks like. You know, there are many herbs for seasonal allergies, and I've just touched upon a few. Like I said, I just wanted to talk about the ones that I've used personally and over and over again that I'm really familiar with. Another example is echinacea. So just if you have experience with other herbs, feel free to list it in the comments below, share your experience um, and what you thought because it might help someone else out too. So I hope that you learned something today. I hope that this really helps you if you are suffering from allergies because I, like I said, I know, I know how, how much it can stick, <laughs> basically. So um, that's all I have for today and I will see you all again soon.